<laughs> Hi everyone, Speedy Rontano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new no-name album, Sundial. This is a brand new record from Chicago native, rapper, singer, songwriter, poet, No Name. It has been a long and dramatic six years since the release of her last full-length record, The Excellent Room 25. Things got especially dicey in the lead-up to this new record, most recently with a public non-apology in response to people taking issue with No Name featuring a verse from rapper Jay Electronica on this record, saying in that non-apology, apology uh, that she is not going to apologize for a verse that she did not write, and uh, your disappointment truly means absolutely nothing uh, to me, and I say that with love. Why does this matter? Uh, why is featuring a verse from Jay Electronica a big deal? Well, Jay is a talented lyricist and a rapper. That much is true. But he also routinely flirts with anti-Semitism uh, in his lyrics here and there, with a lot of nods to Louis Farrakhan, as well as the Nation of Islam. Uh, whose track record on LGBTQ rights uh, is, isn't that great, mind you, also. And even though Jay's ideological leanings are not so secret, he continues to be very much welcome in just about every corner of hip-hop. And it's not just about turning a blind eye or anything, as he's far from the first rapper to have ties to the NOI, and as a result, I'm sure there's a lot of agreement behind the scenes with some of the things he says. Or, at the very least, you have people who think the uh, bad elements of the NOI sort of weigh out out with the good and the cultural significance the organization holds within the black community. The issue is that No Name's very loud, leftist, progressive bona fides have uh, earned her a not-so-average hip-hop audience. Listeners who see Jay Electronica as uh, kind of a questionable figure because of, uh, you know, these NOI name drops because of the anti-Semitic rhetoric in his bars. So, of course, when No Name announced this new record and uh, said that Jay was going to be a part of the album, it rubbed some fans the wrong way. And No Name honestly had a pretty sad response. With a flurry of defensive tweets, tweets with a lot of whataboutism, talking past the concerns of people questioning her too, uh, pretty much every hallmark of garbage Twitter political discourse. And in one particular tweet she posted, uh, she said she may have been motivated to include Jay on the record because it would alienate her white fans. Now, if you're not familiar with No Name, she has long been publicly upset with the fact that her audience skews white, which, in a sense, I do get her unhappiness with that, because the messaging in her music often isn't intended for a white audience, and speaks directly to a pain and a struggle uh, connected to the black community in the U.S. But her way of dealing with this routinely has been to take it out on her white fans, <laughs> rather than plotting on ways to increase the amount of black listenership to her albums. I mean, if she worries about who is or isn't listening to her records, a lot of that boils down to demographics and marketing. Appealing to specific audiences is as easy as bringing a certain vibe or sound that appeals to that audience. Lots of artists all the time change their sound or go for a certain sound in order to uh, grab the attention of people who are into that vibe. D does No Name think she's above doing that or something? That she should just have whatever audience she prefers to have, uh, regardless of what kind of music she puts out, the quality of it, the sound of it? I mean, at the end of the day, in the current music landscape, she has an alternative sound. It's going to attract an alternative audience. It's not the fault of your white fans that it panned out that way. And I don't see why they deserve a shade for just enjoying your music. So honestly, it's kind of a shit show. One that I thought was below no name. But unfortunately, this record, I think, reveals a somewhat inconvenient truth that her perspective, which she's always been very upfront about in her music and, and loud about uh, in her public statements, uh, just doesn't have as much consistency or vision as she originally let on. And, you know, it's heartening that she admits to these flaws uh, in some ways on tracks such as Namesake, where she raps about performing at Coachella despite having, you know, ideological differences with the company, the way it's run, the way the performances were being handled. But also it's kind of mind-boggling. This is the same person who went at figures like J. Cole. It's like she has different expectations for herself as opposed to other artists in the industry. I think this is also illustrated on this same song, uh, specifically on the chorus, as she uh, kind of mentions various figures uh, being like some kind of big distraction 
from things like the military industrial complex, which I think is kind of reductive. I mean, uh, pretty much all young music fans, especially fans of the artists being shouted out here, uh, know this is an issue. Some of the artists she mentions by name haven't exactly been quiet uh, uh, on the topic of injustice generally. Like, even Beyonce fans know America has a problem, right? The problem is we don't live in a damn democracy. If the rich and corporations don't want it, we don't get it. Which couldn't be clearer at this point in history, and I don't know what No Name thinks all these, like, straight shots will accomplish here. If anything's a distraction, it's this infighting and it's this friendly fire. It's not anything Kendrick is doing. So it's unfortunate that this record has so much baggage attached to it entering in. Uh, th th there's just some tracks here that I can't uh, ignore the BS they're steeped in. Even if there is a lot of vocal, lyrical, and musical talent, going into some of these tracks. Like on the intro, which is a very smooth self-portrait with some sweet flute licks, a lot of cool jazzy chord changes, as well as clever and standout lines, such as a flaky as a bitch, the witch inside the broom, motion sick, drifting in and out of consciousness like the rappers do, she a rapper too. Meanwhile, the following track, Hold Me Down, also a highlight on the record, is not No Name's most lyrically focused on the entire project, but I love the beautiful gospel-style vocals featured throughout the chorus, the cute vocal leads from her. Meanwhile, the verses feature a lot of very smart Afrocentrism with themes of unity and also calling out the way uh, that power and money can corrupt uh, those in the community when they reach uh, the top of the hierarchy, like, you know, the former president, Barack Obama. Following this, we have the Jay Electronica track I mentioned earlier, which uh, I do think has some redeemable qualities, but uh, No Name's motivations for having Jay on the record, given that she was public about them, I can't see them as pure, and I just feel like his appearance here is kind of cringe, regardless of the content of his verse, with yet another Louis Farrakhan shout-out. Strangely enough, though, the following track, Boom Boom, is somehow more cringe, with lyrics about, uh, you know, having your poom poom kissed and uh, making a wish. Really, at the end of the day, this track's greatest sin is that it's attempting so hard to be sexual, bring a sexual aura of some sort, but it's just not sexy in execution at all. It's more awkward than anything. Potentially, the interlude is a track that uh, I, I think, you know, lost uh, some potential in just kind of merely being realized as an interlude, which, now that I think about it, is kind of meta, but the track is essentially about how people don't so much love you as much as they love what they see as far as your potential or what you can be, and maybe even in some instances, uh, what they hope for you to be. And this, I think, is one of the smartest and most poignant statements on the entire album, and yet it's not really explored deeply by the lyrics in any way because it's mostly just a refrain, it's mostly just an interlude that comes and goes. Thankfully, Beauty Supply is also about a pretty urgent and, uh, you know, smart topic, and she does dive into this one lyrically pretty thoroughly, talking about how beauty standards in the U.S. are very much based on whiteness and how insecurities around that uh, manifest in products marketed to the black community. Be be it wigs, be it whatever, No Name is far from the first artist to comment on this phenomenon, but I do think this is one of the smarter and more hard-hitting uh, songs on this topic. Moving into the final leg, we get a few more highlights. There is Toxic, which is all about, you know, a, a very awful relationship that No Name exited from. It is well-structured, it's focused, her performance and delivery on the track is certainly passionate, can't take that away from her, but her tone throughout the track is so, 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 so seething, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, I can't help but when I listen to this think maybe there's another side to this story, even if the guy did end up being kind of a dick. The track Afrofuturism isn't too bad either, but I guess the reservation that I have with this cut is that it's uh, one of several on this record that feel kind of short, a little too brief, a little half-baked. I mean, many fans waited so, so, so long to finally hear this record, and it's unfortunate because there are some spots of it that feel uh, sadly just um, undercooked. Thankfully, we do get Gospel, which is an amazing highlight on the record, not just because of just uh, it featuring more incredible group gospel vocals on it, but also the most stellar guest verse on the entire record from none other than Billy Woods, who, when we're talking about features on this project, uh, makes so much more sense as far as like ideological commonalities with No Name uh, as opposed to Jay Electronica, which again, it's weird because on this record, she'll proudly uh, say how much she doesn't mess with Jay-Z, uh, but yet she'll 
just like put herself one degree away from him by having Jay Electronica on the record. Sadly though, even though I love the fact that she makes uh, you know, a very good Chicago connection on the closing track by featuring Common on the album, another artist who I would kind of see as somebody who paved the way for No Name in terms of their current day being a lane for hip hop that is more heady, more poetic, a bit more whimsical. That is common to a T. Uh, but sadly, uh, this track as a closer just feels kind of unceremonious and again, ends up being another spot on this LP that just doesn't feel uh, built up enough. So all in all with this record, while it wasn't terrible, I just have to say on multiple fronts, I'm just disappointed. Disappointed in how unrealized some of these tracks feel, uh, disappointed in how short of breath it is, and disappointed in how hard-headed and wrong-headed uh, some of the motivations behind these tracks are. And again, given previous music, previous statements, I thought No Name was just smarter than that. I know nobody's perfect. I'm not expecting the world from anybody. I'm not expecting her to change the world or anything like that. But for sure, I thought there was more substance to the things she said and the things she did uh, than what she's displayed here. I'm feeling a strong 5 to a light 6 on this one. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, no name, forever.